Now, from the nation's capital, here's the Pentagon Channel's ATS in brief. A soldier who thought he was going on a routine convoy south of Baghdad to document footage of fellow soldiers interacting with Iraqi civilians was taken by surprise when his convoy was hit with an IED. As his camera was rolling, we spoke with specialist Jay Townsend and he described his first convoy experience. We're going out to a farmer's market union meeting where we go out and we interact with the locals, um, offer them grain and tractor supplies and, and uh, what they need to go about their day-to-day -day business. And um, shortly after we left Camp Falcon, um, not too far outside the camp, we, in the rear vehicle, we struck an IED. Um, the vehicle filled with a yellow smoke, um, a nitric acid. Uh, it was a HME that didn't explode all the way. Um, we were pretty lucky. Um, the driver called out IED, IED. Uh, the TC immediately started calling it in. We did a quick check on everybody. Everyone was fine, but uh, we had to exit the vehicle because of the gases that were inside. The Texas Guard was activated Monday when torrential rain led to massive flooding in north and central parts of the state. With rainfall topping 18 inches in some areas, people were left stranded on roofs and vehicles. The Texas Guard spokesman tells the, Net, the Pentagon Channel the Guard is out doing it all it can to help. Typically high water rescue missions with our high profile trucks. So we'll go into areas, we'll both bring responders in and we'll bring people out. We'll also bring supplies, and equipment, and, uh, and we'll do the same thing with our aviation assets to move into areas where it's too dangerous to bring in uh, equipment through streams and rivers that are cresting and we'll bring our, our helicopters in. Right now, about 150 Texas National Guard members are activated to help with the flooding. Nearly 200 members of the Texas National Guard will soon be headed for Iraq. Friends and family said their goodbyes to soldiers with the 236th Military Police Company at a ceremony Tuesday in San Antonio. I'm looking forward to it. All this, you know, training and everything, we're gonna put it to good use. Uh, you know, bad part, family stays back, you know, we're gonna miss each other. Our families in full support of me. They've been nothing but helpful this whole time. I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's come a long ways. Uh, he's doing what he loves to do. And he's happy doing that. So what if he does, we support him 100%. The Texas Guard already has about 2,500 troops in Iraq and another 1,500 along the state's border with Mexico. As we reported, President Bush has nominated Admiral Mike Mullen to succeed General Peter Pace as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and he's named General James Cartwright to be the next Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Cartwright would replace Admiral Edmund Giambastiani. In a ceremony Thursday morning at the White House, the President said the two officers are the right men to lead America's military in a time of war. Mike Mullen and Hoss Cartwright are experienced military officers. They're highly qualified for these important positions. I thank them for agreeing to serve their country in these new uh, capacities. The President also thanked General Peter Pace and Admiral Edmund Giambastiani for their service, calling them two of America's finest military officers. The Joint Chiefs' nominations of both Admiral Mullen and General Cartwright must be approved by the U.S. Senate. An Air Force spokeswoman has identified the Oregon Air National Guard pilot killed Tuesday when his F-15 crashed into the Pacific Ocean. Major Gregory Young was on a training mission along with several other jet fighters when his plane went down. Officials say the Coast Guard is still working to recover parts of the plane. A spokeswoman for the Guard says Major Young had more than 700 hours flying time in the F-15s and more than 1,000 hours in other military aircraft. However, we are highly trained at what we do. We love our jobs, every one of us, and not a single one of us wanted to stop until we had done everything we possibly could. TSP share prices for Thursday, June 28th, opened at $11.99 for the G Fund, $11.24 for the F Fund, $16.82 for the C Fund, $20.56 for the S Fund, and $24.35 for the I Fund. For the Pentagon Channel, I'm Petty Officer Jay Mann.